the new nanny. There is a family living in South London that has the collective intelligence of a dead ant. Mr. Frightfully Busy spends all his time at the office and wears nasty pink ties to work. Mrs. Frightfully Busy helps out in a gift shop in the King's Road. She flits around the shelves all day doing absolutely nothing, trying to avoid serving any customers. Their children are called Tristram and Candy. They hardly know their parents, because their parents are never at home, and they spend most of their days being completely unpleasant to their long-suffering nanny. Mrs. Mack is 63 years old, and was Mrs. Frightfully Busy's nanny when Mrs. Frightfully Busy was a child. Now Mrs. Mack has to look after Tristram and Candy, which is no easy task. In the morning, when Mrs. Mack dresses the children, they lay traps for her by hanging their duvets over the door. Once she is entangled in their quilts, the children leap off the top bunk, tie her up a string in front to push her out the window. When she cooks their lunch, they put the bits they don't want onto her chair, so that when Mrs. Mack sits down, she gets fish fingers all over her bottom. At bath time, they pretend to be asleep in the water. When she leans forward to wake them, they spit water in her face. When it is time for bed, they call her names, hide in the airing cupboard, switch on the telly, refuse to brush their teeth, pretend they are ill, find an interesting book that they wanted to read, and run to their mummy and daddy to tell lies about how badly Mrs. Mack looks after them. The worst thing is that their parents always believe their lies, because in their eyes, Tristram and Candy can do no wrong. One day, Tristram and Candy went too far. Mrs. Mrs. Mac beat, beat us today. today, they lied to their parents. Mrs. Frightfully Busy looked up from her martini. She beat my precious little angels! Yes, said Candy. So hard that I cried. That's not on, said Mr. Frightfully Busy. Remind me to tell Mrs. Mac never to do it again. I should fix so too, added Mrs. Frightfully Busy. Now run along, children. Mummy and Daddy want a little peace and quiet. She beat us with your golf clubs, Daddy. <gasps> My golf clubs? Mr. Frightfully Busy was out of his chair in a flash. Did she break them? Oh, yes, whispered Tristram, who was a very good actor. Across the back of my legs. Those golf clubs cost me a fortune, he shouted as he stormed out of the room. Then they heard him bellow from the foot of the stairs. Mrs. Mack, you're fired. Pack your bags and get out of this house at once. Poor old Mrs. Mack. She had worked for the family for 40 years, and now she was being thrown out because of one malicious, spiteful, childish lie. The next day, Mrs. Frightfully Busy was in a panic. There was no nanny to look after her children, and she certainly wasn't going to do it. She looked in the telephone directory under Nanny. All the agencies seemed to be exactly the same, except for one. Animal Magic, it read. We provide nannies to suit all children. No child too difficult to handle. Mrs. Frightfully Busy phoned them up. They are the most adorable little children you could ever wish to meet, she said to the voice at the other end of the phone. Dear sweet Tristram is so kind and gentle, and Candy is really no trouble at all. I hardly know she's there sometimes. There'll be someone round in half an hour, said the voice, and Mrs. Frightfully Busy heaved an enormous sigh of relief. Half an hour later, there was a ring at the door. Come and meet your new nanny, Mrs. Frightfully Busy shouted to Tristram and Candy as she opened the front door. There was nobody there. Down here, hissed a voice on the front path. Mrs. Frightfully Busy looked down. Animal service nannies at your service, added the twelve meter long python as it slithered across the doormat and into the hall. Tristram and Candy stopped 
dead at the foot of the stairs. Their jaws dropped open in disbelief. A long brown snake, wearing a starched white apron and carrying a handbag, had to slid into their house. Their mother must have gone stark staring bonkers and to cap it all off, she hadn't even noticed. I'll be back at six. Have a good day, said Mrs. Frightfully Busy, picking her car keys up from the hall table and sweeping out of the front door. The door slammed shut and Tristram and Candy were left alone with their new nanny. What would you like to do today, children? said the python. Its red tongue darted in and out of its mouth. The children were too frightened to answer. Shall we play a game of snakes and ladders? Candy couldn't help herself. She screamed, Don't eat us! Eat you? said the snake. Don't be silly. I'm here to look after you. Just treat me as you would any other nanny. That was what Tristram and Candy needed to hear. From that moment on, they reverted to their normal horrible selves. At lunch, they stuck their nanny's tail in a pan of boiling water. In the park, they scattered tin tacks on the path, which pierced her skin as she slivered over them. They wrapped her up in their parents' bath towels and stuck her head down the lavatory. They knotted her around the legs of their bunt bags and left her tied up all afternoon while they watched the telly. They even staked her out in the back garden and waited for the birds to come down and peck at her, thinking she was an enormous worm. By the time Mr. and Mrs. Frightfully Busy came back that night, the new nanny was a nervous wreck. She was more scared of the children than they were of her. No sooner did she hear the front door open than she was out of that house faster than a speeding bullet. How was the new nanny? said Mr. Frightfully Busy. Really cruel, lied the children. Did you know, said Tristram, she nearly strangled me when she gave me a hug. Then she's never coming back into this house, declared Mrs. Frightfully Busy. The next morning, Mrs. Frightfully Busy phoned Animal Magic again. The nanny you said yesterday was completely useless, she said. Yes, said the voice at the other end. I know. She told us all about your children. We'll send you a more suitable nanny today. She'll drop in in about 15 minutes. Sure enough, 15 minutes later the doorbell rang. Mrs. Frightfully Busy picked up her car keys and opened the door. Bye, children! The new nanny is here! See you later! She didn't even stop to find out who the new nanny was. Tristram and Candy rushed to the open door to see for themselves, but they could see no one. Cooey! said a voice above them, but before they could look up, an enormous hairy black spider dropped down from the roof of the porch. I'm the new nanny! said the spider as she bit through her web and scuttled into the hall. You must be Tristram and Candy. I've heard so much about you. Tristram and Candy had turned white. I (laughs) hate spiders, stammered Tristram. Me too, agreed Candy. Don't be silly, said the spider. I wouldn't tell a fly. She paused for a moment to think. Well, maybe a fly, but I wouldn't harm you. Oh, good, said Candy, who was already thinking up some awful prank to play on the spider. Now, where should we begin, said the nanny. In the bathroom, fibbed Candy. We always have a bath after breakfast. So up to the bathroom they went. It is a well-known fact that spiders hate water. The children's nanny was no exception. Her own father had nearly drowned once in a hand basin. Tristram and Candy deliberately kept splashing her. Stop it! she screamed. The children gained the upper hand. Shan't! shouted Tristram, filling a bucket full of water and pouring it over his nanny's head. She retreated into a corner and curled up into a furry ball. The children jumped out of the water, picked her up, threw her into the bath, and pulled the plug out. 
the spider was caught into a raging whirlpool that sucked her down towards the drain. Tristram and Candy poked her with a flannel and laughed. The spider suddenly sprang open, her legs flinging about in the torrent, and with one mighty effort, she clawed her way to the edge of the bath and climbed out. Tristram offered her his towel. What can we do now? he smirked. I know, said Candy to the spider. You can build us a climbing frame in the garden. The new nanny was wet and miserable as she set about spinning the children a climbing frame. Every time she stopped to catch her breath, they shouted, Ma! It's still not big enough! Until finally, her web stretched from one garden fence to the other. At its highest point, it reached the chimney pot on top of the roof, and it fell away steeply across the entire length of the garden to Mr. Frightfully Busy's compost heap. It looked like a circus safety net, the sort trapeze artists use in the big top. The spider collapsed at the end of her ordeal and fell asleep from exhaustion. A fine nanny she turned out to be, said Tristram. Let's teach her a lesson she'll never forget. So they pulled down the climbing frame, and while she slept, they wrapped her up in her own web. That was how Mr. and Mrs. Frightfully Busy found her. Cold and damp, the children's unlucky prisoner. This looks like a fun game, said Mr. Frightfully Busy. What's it called? Poke the nanny, said Candy, prodding the spider with a sharp stick. What a super idea, said Mrs. Frightfully Busy. Then, thank you, nanny. You can go now. We'll see you in the morning. Mr. Frightfully Busy picked up the spider, put her in a wheelbarrow, and dumped her on the pavement. In bed that night, Tristan was asked what he thought of his new nanny. Even crueler than the snake, he lied. Did you know what she did? She tied her web round our ankles and hung us upside down from the ceiling all morning. We don't like her, chipped in Candy. Then she's never coming back into this house, declared Mrs. Frightfully Busy. The following morning, she rang up the Animal Magic Nanny Agency for the third time. I'll give you one last chance to send me a nanny who can look after my children properly, she shouted down the phone. Yes, Mrs. Frightfully Busy. As it happens, we have the perfect nanny right here in the office. I'll send her over straight away, said the voice at the other end. On this particular morning, Mrs. Frightfully Busy couldn't even wait for the new nanny to arrive. She just had to get off to work. I'll leave the door on the latch, she said to the children. When the new nanny arrives, just tell her to come straight in. Then she pulled the door to and left Tristram and Candy alone in the house. Seconds later, they heard squelchy footsteps outside the front door. Come straight in, shouted Tristram, who was standing on a chair waiting to bonk his new nanny on the head with a baseball bat as she came through the door. The door swung open and the squelchy footsteps came in. Clock! Tristram brought the bat down hard on the nanny's head. Candy squirreled with delight. It was such a clever trick. Then, they both stopped laughing. The new nanny blinked and continued walking. She stopped in the middle of the hall. Water dripped off her scaly back and formed tiny puddles on the carpet. She flicked her tail. I'm your new nanny, said the alligator. Any nonsense, and I'll eat you for breakfast. We're not scared of you, are we? Said Candy, cockily. No way, said Tristram. You're just the nanny. Take that. And he hit the alligator on the head again. It was all over in a flash. Two snaps, two gulps, and the children were gone. When Mr. and Mrs. Frightfully Busy came home that night, they couldn't find the children anywhere. Mrs. Frightfully Busy did, however, find a very sleepy alligator curled up in the airing cupboard. Are you the nanny? she said. Yes, said the alligator, opening one eye. Where are the children? said Mr. Frightfully Busy, hiding behind his wife. I've eaten them, said the alligator, licking her lips. Although I must say they tasted horrible. But then little liars always do. Get out of this house immediately, shouted Mr. Frightfully Busy. 
That won't be necessary, replied the alligator, raising her head and flashing a fearsome set of teeth. She edged forward, and Mr. and Mrs. Frightfully Busy backed away down the stairs. Then the alligator stood up on her back legs, and just as they thought she was going to pounce, she laid two large white eggs. Excuse me, said the alligator, brushing past Mr. and Mrs. Frightfully Busy. Places to go, people to see. And she left. Mr. Frightfully Busy sat his wife down, then went over to the eggs to take a closer look. They each had a long crack down one side. As Mr. Frightfully Busy watched, the cracks grew bigger. The eggs are hatching, he said to his wife. We're about to be invaded by baby alligators. There was a crunch, then a snap. Something scraped across the edge of the shell. Then the first finger emerged, followed by an arm, a neck, then a head. It was Tristram. My baby! shouted Mrs. Frightfully Busy, rushing over and wrapping her arms around him. Candy suddenly burst through the shell of the second egg. My two babies! she wailed. What happened? We were rude and nasty to the nanny, said Tristram. And she ate us added Candy. It was the first time they had ever told the plain truth. There was a ring at the front door. Mr. Frightfully Busy left his family to answer it. It was Mrs. Mack. I was wondering if you had found a new nanny yet for Tristam and Candy, she said. No, said Mr. Frightfully Busy. In that case, would you like me to come back, said Mrs. Mack. Mr. Frightfully Busy didn't know what to say. Then he remembered the snake, the spider, and that awful alligator. Yes, please, he said without hesitation. When can you start? Right away, said Mrs. Mack, if you'll help me in with my things. Certainly, said Mr. Frightfully Busy, and he bent down to pick up her suitcases. One was made of snake skin. One was all black and hairy and looked remarkably like a spider. And the third, the biggest of them all was made from the skin of an alligator.